All right, so let's go over the daily two for today. And the first one is a conversion. So the conversion is 35.6 kilograms is equal to how many grams? Okay, now to uh, remember the big Z or any other way, kilo to kilogram to gram, we're going to move the decimal point three places. Okay, three places. And then it's three places to the right. Okay, if you remember the big Z, or the kilo is up here and the unit was down here, it's so going down the Z, so we go to the right to finish it. All right, so we're going to end up moving that three places to the right, and, and then the answer is going to be 35,600. Okay, <clears throat> the most common in incorrect answer that, I, that I'm looking at is 0 0.0356. Those people moved it three places to the left instead of the right. Okay, so um, that person in. So the uh, proper conversion is 35,600. Okay. All right. Then the second question was: Give an example of an object that is that is moving in a negative direction um, <clears throat> and accelerating positively. Now this is a little bit tricky. Okay, this is a, um, this is a little bit tricky. A, a, an object that is moving in a negative direction. Uh, an example of that would be a uh, a falling object. Okay, like this pen. If I just released it. Okay, and <clears throat> if uh, if I let it go, it would be going in a negative direction and ac actually accelerating negatively. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared, right? And that, so its speed would be increasing in the negative. That is uh, accelerating negatively. We want something that is accelerating positively. So its velocity must change towards the positive. Now, and a dropped object is, is a great example of an object moving in a negative direction. But to accelerate positively, it has to change its negative velocity to less negative velocity, or even positive velocity. So an object that is dropping but slowing down would be an example of a velocity change from, say, negative 4 meters per second to negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1 to 0. Okay, We're moving right on the, on the velocity number line. And any time you move to the right on the velocity number line, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, that is positive acceleration. Okay, so another example that I saw in the responses, and a very good example, was a car going in reverse but slowing down. A car um, going in reverse and speeding up would be the same uh, example as an object that's dropped. Okay, it's increasing its velocity in the negative direction. We want it to accelerate positively, so we want it to... Um, <clears throat> um, changes more negative velocity to less negative velocity. So an object going in reverse, but slowing down, it's going at negative 4 meters per second, but slowing down to negative 3 meters per second, slowing down to negative 2 meters per second, you know, negative 1 meters per second, zero, and then even starting going forward. But before that, if, if the object is moving in a negative direction, okay, the car that's slowing down in reverse, okay? That's tricky. That's tricky. But um, remember, a positive acceleration is whenever the, the velocity changes towards more positive values. Okay? They can be negative. If they get less negative, they're still moving towards the, um, towards the positive side of the number line. Okay? Tricky, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's true. Okay? All right. Questions about that? Any questions about that? Okay, then what I'd like you to do, please, is to get out that example that I asked you to do for today. That example was 120 newtons at, I want you to find the resultant of a couple of forces, 120 newtons at 180 degrees and 70 newtons at 90 degrees. And I actually have, I'm going to take the screen because I want to show you the answer to this, okay? And so let me take the screen. Um, and I'm going to share this with you. Okay, and that's right here. So we want to determine the resultant of these two, these two forces. Okay, and 
So I have the first force going at 120 newtons at 180 degrees. So if I draw that, it's going to go down like that. And then if I go 70 newtons at 90 degrees, that's going to go like that. Okay. Now notice how I have these vectors drawn. They they have they're both coming from the same point. If you remember how what I term these, I call these concurrent force vectors, uh, vectors that go um, uh, acting at the same point. Okay. So, for example, if Mary was pushing on a ball downward and her friend Jerry was pushing on a, on a ball to the right, same ball, where would that ball go? Well, due to Mary, it's going to go down. Due to Jerry, it's going to go to the right. So it's going to end up going down and to the right. So, a <clears throat> so we need to draw the resultant down and to the right. Now, a common um, error that I sometimes see here is people, uh, students draw a, a resultant vector from one tip of the arrow to the other, either going down like that or up like that. Well, that's not really how the ball is going to move, though. You know, it's going to, due to the influence of F1, it's going to be moving towards the bottom of the page. Due to the influence of F2, it's going to be moving to the right. So to, so to find the proper one for this, we, we draw that little vector parallelogram. Draw dashed lines parallel to each side, and then, and then the resultant goes from the starting point to where the where the dashed lines meet, that diagonal. You would achieve the same result if you added F2 tail to tip, if you basically picked up F2 here and started it <coughs> started it at F1, going to here and then drawing the result from beginning to end. Both ways are um, equivalent. You get the same result. This way, with force vectors, is a little bit more descriptive because we have the forces acting at a single point, um, the ball that I mentioned. Or it could be the truss uh, of a bridge, certain stress points of, at the truss of a bridge. Okay, Drawing them tail to tip is convenient when talking about something like displacements, when you move to that point and then from there you move to a different point. So tail to tip is very convenient for displacements. Um, this way is more convenient for forces, okay? But you end up with the same result. You get R this way. All right, to find the magnitude of R, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we get that. And the result of that, uh, my calculator said 19,300 for that sum, and then to the nearest Newton, 139 Newtons. 139 Newtons for a magnitude, okay? All right, and then to find the direction, I'm going to take this angle right here, all right, and uh, I know that F1 has a value of 120, so so does this dashed line. That's opposite to the angle. The adjacent F2 has a magnitude of 70, so opposite and adjacent can be used to find the angle, and we're going to use the tangent function from Sokotoa. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Uh, blah, 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 and we get that. And my calculator gave me an inverse tangent to the nearest degree of 60 degrees. It was like 59.7 or something like that. 60 degrees. All right, now, taking that vector and moving it to my uh, navigational compass here, okay, I can see that 60 degree angle was actually started at 90. So the bearing of this force vector will be 90 plus 60. 90 plus 60, or 150. And so our, so our answer then, to re, we report the resultant as 139 newtons at 150 degrees. And that's our answer. Any questions? Any questions about that? No? All right. Then, then um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I want to... Yeah, I, I, I found it after I stopped sharing. Um, i got to get my camera back. What I want to do today, the, the topic of the day is equilibrium. Okay? The equilibrium. And I want to show you... Is my camera? Come on. Come on, camera. You can do it. I want to show you a situation of equilibrium when my camera comes back. There we go. And so I'm going to actually, I am, I'm working with my webcam today. So 
And I'm going to show you this on the on the board. Oops. Oh dear. Stuff is stuff is falling down here. All right. So I'm going to show this on the board. Okay. Bring this down a little bit. And give me a give me a moment to get it set up here. So what I have actually is on the hanging are a couple of scales that we'll be using today. Let me show you these. So this is a scale. Okay. And it's actually rated in something called dimes, which is Never mind about that. And Newtons. So this scale is measured in Newtons. I know the camera doesn't have super good resolution. But when I pull on this, when I pull on that spring, I can measure the num number of Newtons of force. Okay? So we're going to use this as a, as a force, as a force meter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang a string from a couple of from a couple of I'm going to hang a string from a couple of scales, and then I'm going to hang a one kilogram mass from here. So I'm going to have it like this. Okay, now let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire thing. Okay, so let's see. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, okay. There, now you can see. So so I have so the I have actually three forces acting in this in this system, and they're all acting at the same point. The point being the knot of that string right there. Okay, and these forces are in equilibrium. I have a force going down due to the weight of the mass. I have a force going up along this string, and I have a force going up along this string. And these forces are in equilibrium. Okay, and I want to chart this. I want to draw this out with the scale diagram to show you how force vectors in equilibrium add together, okay? So to do that, I'm going to write on the board behind this system. So, excuse me while I turn my back to you. I want to get the point of concurrency, the, forces, the, the point at which those act behind the knot. Then I'm going to take this uh, meter stick. I'm going to put it right along that string. I want to document the direction that, that the, the force acts along that string. That's going to be right here. I'll call that F1. Then we want to get the force that acts along this string. So kind of lining that up, getting it all parallel. Pardon me while I turn my back to you. Trying to get all this lined up. Kind of like that. Going to act string out of the way up in this direction. I'll call that F2. And then the, uh, the third force is the weight of this mass acting along this string straight down. So I'm going to need to get a vector straight down. And so um, that's. That's pretty good right there. So I'm going to get a vector straight down. Now I'll call that the weight vector. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to draw a scale diagram. So uh, to do that, I need the values of these forces. I need the magnitudes of those forces. I have their directions. Now I need the magnitude. Well, the weight vector, the weight, uh, the mass is a one kilogram mass. So the weight vector, um, weight is equal to m times g, which is equal to one kilogram times 9.8. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. Um, and so that's 9.8 newtons. So the weight vector is 9.8 newtons. Okay. The F2 and the F1 can be read from these scales. So let's read F1. What is the value of F1? Well, let's see. Let's take a look at this scale. Um, that's somewhere between 5 and 6. It looks to be about, I don't know how easily you guys can see it. I'm trying to hold it still, about 5.6 5 .6 newtons. 
5.6 newtons for F1. 5.6 newtons. And then the magnitude of F2, let's see what that is. Uh, let's see. Need a little more. Bring the computer with me here. So it looks to be about 7.2 or so. About 7.2. We'll call it 7.2 newtons. Okay, so this is going to be 7.2 newtons. Okay, now I'm going to take this setup down because I want to draw on the board. If I need it, out of the way. All right, now. What I'm going to do is draw a scale diagram. I'm going to draw these vectors to scale. Now, to do that, I need a scale to use. The scale I'm going to use is this. One centimeter on my meter stick, one centimeter on my meter stick is going to represent, is going to represent one quarter of a newton. Okay? A quarter of a newton. Now, that means that 4 centimeters represents 1 newton. 4 centimeters represents 1 newton. And so this 9.8 newton vector will be how many centimeters long will, that, will I draw that line? Well, if 4 centimeters represents 1 newton, sorry, I didn't aim that up high enough. If 4 centimeters represents 1 newton, I'm going to multiply 9.8 times 4. And so 9.8 newtons will be equivalent to will be equivalent to 9.8 times 4, which is 39.2 centimeters, according to this scale. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line that's 39.2 centimeters long in this direction, straight down. So let's see, I can't start at zero because I don't have enough. I'll start at 40. I'll start at 40. And 39.2, so 10, 20, 30, 9 point, uh, right there, 39.2, 39.2 centimeters is right there. And that's my weight vector. I'm actually going to draw it over here. Okay, now, what I want to do is I want to add F2 tail to tip. So I want to pick that vector up, and I want to set it down so that the tail of F2 is at the tip of the weight vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make my meter stick parallel to F2. Get that out of the way so my visual visual doesn't mess me up visually. And I'm going to see, is that meter stick parallel to F2? That's pretty close. That's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. And... So you started on the 80. How far of a line am I going to need to draw? Well, 5.6 newtons times 4. Let's see. Uh, what is that? 4 times 5 is 20. That's uh, 4 uh, 2.4. So 22.4 centimeters. That's going to be equivalent to a 22.4 centimeter line. So I'm going to draw 22.4 centimeters. So I started at the 80. 10, 20, 2.4 is right around... There. So, there. Arrowhead, and this is F2. Okay? Okay, I don't need this anymore. All right. All right, finally, I want to, I want to add F1 to this. And so I'm going to pick up F1 and just set it down here. So I'm going to have it in the same. Oh, I know. I, I, I did make an error. Okay, uh, F1 is here. This was F2. I, draw the, I drew the wrong length line. Um, what I need to draw is 4 times this, or 28.8 centimeters. Yeah, I made an error, but I drew the wrong force. This was F2, so this is wrong. I need to draw yeah, F2 right there. So I need 28.8 centimeters. Okay, let me fix that. So, all right, 
10, 20, 8 point, uh, 8 is right there. Okay. Sorry about that. So that's, that's F2. Lost both screens. Um, both my screens went quiet at the same time. Okay. So there I have F2. Now I want to add F1 to this. So I'm going to draw a line parallel to F1. And that's, so you're going to get on the end here. That's pretty darn parallel right there. Drawing from the tip of F, from the tip of F2. And this line, F1, is going to be 22.4 centimeters long. Starting at the 50. 10, 22.4, and I end up right there, right there, right there, okay? Notice, it's right back at the starting point, or very nearly so, very nearly so. If everything had worked out perfectly, it would be perfectly at the, at the starting point, okay? So these are indicating equilibrium, and equilibrium is where the overall force, the net force, is zero. We know it was zero because nothing moved, nothing accelerated. So equilibrium is when these force vectors add to give you an overall force of zero. We ended right back at the starting point. Okay? So these add vectorially to zero. If you were here, you'd be doing a lab and, and, and proving that with your data, or doing this with your data. Okay? Um, but that's unavailable right now, so... So I just wanted to show it to you, okay? So the, when forces are in equilibrium, they add to zero. And we can prove that with a scale diagram, like we just did. All right? Okay, but we don't always use scale diagrams. A lot of times we want to do it just mathematically. So I want to do an example of that. Now... We did, there, on the vector form one, there was a problem number four, or actually, the third problem in vector form one asked you to, asked you to um, predict that. And the, let, me, let me just recreate that, that very quickly, what that was. So what you had, what you had were a couple of vectors. One vector was 125 newtons, 125 newtons at uh, 270, okay? And the other one was 40 newtons at 180. 40 newtons at 180. And so, you know, give you my reference, 0, 90, 180, 270 visual reference. So I had one going at 270, another going at 180. So... I would have a vector going like that, um, and a vector going like that. Okay, and the overall effect, you know, if Bill were pushing something this way, and his friend Jill was pushing on that same thing this way, the overall effect of that would be going down and to the left, which we can which we can find with our vector parallelogram. And so the resultant would be going that way. And what, we, what you guys did was you ultimately found the magnitude and, and direction of, that, uh, of this um, resultant vector. And the answer, if you use Pythagorean theorem, you could get a magnitude of 131 newtons. And then if you use the tangent function to find either one of these angles, doesn't matter which one, and then find the bearing, um, it was 252 degrees. So that was the value of the resultant. Okay, now, we'd like to take that a step further now and talk about equilibrium. What will be, I want to add a third force. I want to add a third force to this system, to put the system into equilibrium. Okay, in which direction? Will that force point? In which direction will that force point? 
Unfortunately, you're not in a room. Otherwise, I'd have you point your finger or pencils. And I don't even have gallery view on my school computer, uh, so I can't even see it. So you're gonna have to. So you're gonna have to, you know, unmute or put it in the chat window. I'm very limited with my with my ability to see you guys, which stinks. But uh, it's all I got. So in which direction will the third force vector point? If you, if Bill were pulling that way and Jill were pulling this way, which way would you pull so that the object, I don't know, some kind of ring with ropes tied to it, which way would it, which way would it, which way would you pull? Yeah. Okay. You're trying to negate this one and this one. And the overall effect of these two is this right here. Okay. So you have to negate, you have to nullify that resultant vector. So which way would you point? All right. Yeah. Yeah. That way. If Bill is pulling that way, Jill is pulling this way, and you want that ring not to move, you're going to pull it that way. Okay. This is a special vector in physics called the equilibrium, which I will never test you on. Okay. The, uh, the, the, the force that pulls, the, the force that puts a system into equilibrium. Okay. I didn't get that direction quite right. Should be that better? A little better. Okay, how many newtons? What's the magnitude of E? How many newtons? How many newtons? Yeah, 131. It has to match the resultant. 131 newtons. Right. Now, what's the direction? Oh dear. Sorry about that. What's the direction? I want I want a number of degrees, you know. At what bearing will this be? Well, the resultant, the resultant was 252. We want to go exactly opposite to this. We want to go exactly opposite. R and E differ by how many degrees? Well, R and E, right? So to find this direction, we're going to subtract 180. And subtracting 180, if I take 252 minus 180, what do we get? We get 72. So the vector that will, or the force that will put that system into equilibrium is that right there. Okay. All right. Questions about that? Now, this is all part of a lab uh, entitled the force table. Um, and <clears throat> I kind of want to do that as a class today. So over here is a force table. And what it is is a table that has pulleys that can be moved around. Okay, It has a ring in the center with three strings tied to it. It has a pin holding the ring in place. And these, these, uh, these um, pulleys are put at different angles. And there are numbers along the outside. It's kind of hard for you to see with the glare of the room lights. But it goes from 0 to 360. There's 0, 10, 20, you know, all the way around. Uh, 360 degrees. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to place certain masses at certain angles. I'll put this down. We're going to put certain masses at different angles, and they are going to produce forces. Okay. So here's the example that we're going to do. We're going to do this on paper, and then we're going to test it. We're going to work with the force table. 
Okay? All right, so take this away. And the example I'm going to use is right here. So we're going to put 200 grams. I'm going to put 200 grams at um, 90 degrees. Okay, take this down with me. 200 grams at 90 degrees. And I'm going to put 100 grams at uh, 180 degrees. Okay. Actually, let's do that. So I have, uh, let's see, 90 degrees and 180. Oh, I have to move one of my, to move one of my pulleys. Move one of my pulleys. Um, so move this to 90. That's right. Stay out of the way so I can see. Um, 90 is right there. Okay, so there's 90. 180 is over here. It's over there. So I'm going to put 200 grams at 90. I'm going to put 200 grams... 90, like that. And then I'm going to put 100 grams, 100 grams at 180. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> now, they are going to produce a force that's trying to pull this ring right off the table. If I pull, if I pull this ring, you know, it's going to, it's going to move like that. But I want to secure it in place. And what we want to do is we want to find the resultant of these. Now, these, this 200 grams and this 100 grams are not forces. They are just masses. But the weight of them, the weight of them will produce a force. Okay? So what we need to find is the weight of 200 grams. I'm going to have you guys do that. Would you please calculate the weight of 200 grams? Okay? And let me know what it is. What is the weight of 200 grams? What is the weight of 200 grams? Calculators. Okay, guys. Time's a wasting. Now, be careful because this is in grams, and to use the weight equation, we need kilograms. So be sure to change the masses to kilograms. Okay? What is the weight of 200 grams using kilograms? So changing grams to kilograms, 0 0.2 kilograms times 9.8. And that yes, those of you who responded, thank you. 1.96 newtons. So this is not really 200 grams. Instead, we have to use forces. So that's 1.96 newtons. All right. Okay. What is the weight of 100 grams? What is the weight of 100 grams? What is the weight of 100 grams? My right, calculators, let's go. Uh oh, just ended. I lost. Let's see. The camera turned off. I don't know why. Camera turned off. 0 0.98, yeah. 
0 0.98. 0 0.98. So I have to use 0 0.98 here instead of 100 grams. All right. Now let's draw a sketch. My little reference compass here is 0, 90, 180, and 270. So I'm going uh, 90 and I'm going 180. So I'm going to start here. So I'm going to go, actually move down. So I'm going that way with 1.96 newtons. And then I'm going to go down at 180, 0 0.98 newtons. All right. And if Steve pushes it down and his friend Eve pushes it to the right, the net result of all that is going to be going down and to the left. So my resultant is going to go down like Okay. I'd like you please to find the magnitude Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the, the uh, magnitude of r. Okay? I'll give you a few minutes. Normally, I would write this out. Well, what is the magnitude of r? It's going to be 2 point something, I think. Give me three sig figs. 2.19, says Liam. Is that confirmed? Did he hit the right buttons on his calculator? 2.19? 2.19? Okay, 2.19. Thank you. 2.19 newtons. All right, now, an angle. We need an angle. Well, let's take uh, this angle right there. This angle right here. Now, the opposite is 0 0.98. Opposite, adjacent. Okay, that's related by the tangent function. So the tangent of x is opposite over adjacent. 0 0.98 over 1.96. Alright, I happen to know that that's exactly equal to 1 half. So then the angle will be the inverse tangent of 1 half. To the nearest degree, calculators, what is the inverse tangent of 0 0.5? What is the inverse tangent of 0 0.5? 27? Is that confirmed? 27? 27. Okay. 27 degrees. That 27 degrees, that 27 degrees right here, and I'm kind of adding that on to 90, right? Adding that on to 90. This in the center of the picture a little bit. So I'm so my bearing then is going to be 90 plus 27. So bearing then is 90 plus 27. Or 117 degrees. And then finally I can report my resultant. I can report my result as 2.19 newtons at 117 degrees. Okay, that's my result. All right, any questions about that? All right, well, that's not really even my goal. My goal of this is to actually predict the vector, or the force, that will put this system into equilibrium, okay? How many newtons 
will E have? What will be the magnitude of E? How many newtons? How many newtons? Yeah, 2.19. It has to match the resultant. 2.19 newtons. 2.19 newtons. All right, now, at what direction? In what direction? R, the bearing of R, was 117 degrees. Okay, so, actually, let's take this over to the force table for a second. Let's take this over to the force table. So, these two result, in fact, these two, the force along, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, the force along this string and the force along this string combine to give a force at 117 degrees. And 117 degrees is right around here, okay? Right around the direction of the pencil. It says 117. So the resultant of these two forces goes right along this pencil, okay? So what will be the one that negates it? Well, it's going to be the one that goes in this direction, along the string, exactly opposite to it. Exactly opposite to it. Okay. And what will be the degree measure of that? What will be, where should I put the pulley? At exactly what degree on the force table? Well, it's going to be 180 degrees different. So where am I going to put it? So at 117 plus 180. And 117 plus 180 is 297. Oops. A little bit off screen. So I'm going to put that pulley at 297 degrees, which I will do now. So that pulley, let's see, we're aiming down on the force table. I know you can't see the numbers very well, but I'm going to put that pulley right at 297. That's right, it's right there, right there. Okay, and then finally, <clears throat> how much mass am I going to hang on that string? Well, I have to produce. Sorry, I'm kind of making you. Motion stick there. Um, I have to produce a force of 2.19 newtons. 2.19 newtons. Okay. Where's that force going to come from? It's going to come from the, the weight of a certain number of these masses. You know, the, a certain number of these masses that I'm going to hang to produce a force of 2.19 newtons. How much mass will I need to use? Well, if the weight... If the weight, let's see where can I find some space to work here? If the weight, come on, on coming on over here. Equals mg, divide out the g, and I get the mass is equal to the weight divided by the g. And so I have 2.19 newtons. That's the weight that we want to use, or the that's the force we want. So that's the weight we want, uh, divided by 9.8. Calculators. What's 2.19 divided by 9.8? 2.19 divided by 9.8. Give me three sig figs. Give me zero point something. 0 0.223? 0 0.223? Kilograms. 0 0.223 kilograms. Okay, and uh, um, if I change that to mass, move the three places to the right, 
This is the same as 223 grams. Okay? All right, so I need 223 grams of mass. All right, so let's get that. I have an E balance here. I have an E balance. Oh, the glare of the room lights is messing me up a little bit. Can you see it? Yeah, okay. So there's, there's 200. 220. I need three more. A couple of paper clips. A couple of paper clips. That's pretty close right there. 223 grams. So I'm going to put 223 grams on that string. There's the 200. There's the 20. And there's the three. All right, and let's see what that ring is doing. I'm posted. And it's doing nothing. It is, it is in equilibrium. Okay? So these three forces that are acting along the strings are producing a net force on the ring of zero. Okay? The net force is zero, and this ring is in equilibrium. Okay? All right? This is a fun lab. I really wish you guys were here to, to, to play with the force table because it's fun. <clears throat> okay. Now, we have, I want you to spend the next 10 minutes in breakout rooms working on another one of these. Okay? And here's, here's what the problem is going to be. Follow this lead. Okay? Follow this example. Example number two. I'm going to put 300 grams at zero degrees, and I'm going to put 100 grams at uh, 270. First of all, find the weight. Find the weight. And then that's going to produce forces at these angles. Find the resultant of those forces. And then predict the third force that will that will produce equilibrium. Okay? So you can get that done in 10 minutes or so. So I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms. Follow the same example that I just did. And I'll see you in 10 minutes. Zero.
Tangent seventy two degrees. Seventy two and Pretend that's a straight line. Quinn, did you have a question? Oh, my goodness gracious. I can't get to the break arm because I have to reclaim the host participation. participants. Reclaim the host. How do I? Oh, my. Reclaim the host. Okay, there we go. Um, Quinn, what is it? Oh, and then I forgot to assign you guys to breakout rooms. Oh, dear. Well, let's see. Liam, where are we going? Amy. You were with Amy. Yeah, and Kelly, you guys came late. And I forgot to send you to your breakout rooms. And then Quinn had a question. Todd, as a. Yeah, Quinn, finally got here. I'm confused on where we were supposed to get the problem. Where you were supposed to get the problem? I like I checked Schoology, but I can't find anything. I just I just wrote it on the board. This is the example we're doing. Oh shoot! Uh, sorry, I, I didn't just, catch I just, that. I just made it up out of my head. Okay. So it's three hundred grams at zero, one hundred grams at two seventy. That's the example we're doing. All right. Thank okay. you. Yep. Okay. And 
that was okay. All right, do I have everybody back? Oop, I'm muted. Do I have everybody back? Okay. All right. Where's back? I, I know that I may not have given you enough time to, to finish that, um, but we're kind of bumping up to the end of the period, so sorry about that. Um, but let's see how far you got. So I had 300 grams at zero, 100 grams at 270. We needed to find the weights of those, so I found the weight of uh, the 300 grams to be 2.94 newtons and the weight of 100 grams to be 0 0.98 newtons, okay, which I changed here. And then I drew a sketch, 2.94 newtons at 0, 0 0.98 newtons at 270. And I drew my little vector parallelogram, so my resultant came up and to the right. Okay, hopefully we agree so far, I hope. And so now, to find the magnitude of R, Pythagorean theorem gave me a result of 3.10 newtons. 3.10 newtons, okay? For the direction, I chose this angle here. You could have chosen that one, okay, but I chose this one. Opposite over adjacent this being 0 0.98, oops, oh, adjacent 0 0.98. Opposite over adjacent, okay, will be, um, uh, this, this turned out to be three, the inverse tangent of three turned out to be 72 degrees. Uh, the bearing, I drew that from 270 in an increasing direction, so I added 72 to 270, I got 342. So the resultant, is 3.10 newtons at 342 degrees. Okay. Then I want that the third force that will uh, put the system into equilibrium. So that force is going to point in the opposite direction at, at R with the same number of newtons. So that's going to be 3.1 newtons. And then the direction can be found because it's 180 degrees different. So take the direction of R the bearing, 342, and I subtracted off the 180. And that turned out to be 162. So, 3.10 newtons at 162 degrees. 
So I'm going to put my pulley on the force table. I'm going to put the pulley at 162 degrees, which is going to be, uh, which is going to be about, it's going to be as carefully as I can get it there, 162 degrees right here. Okay, so the string is going to pull the 162 at 162 degrees. Now, I have to figure out how much mass I'm going to use to produce that much force. So I need to find the, the mass, okay, uh, somebody got kicked out. I need to find the mass. So the weight, I want a weight of 3.1 uh, 3 newtons. Oops, I'm aiming wrong, sorry about that. Okay, better. 3.1 newtons divided by 9.8, 0 0.316 kilograms which translates to 316 grams. So, I need 316 grams of mass. So, here's my E-balance. E-balance. I need 316. There's 200. There's 300. There's 310. And 16 and a couple of paper clips. Uh, another couple paper clips, and that's 316. So I'm going to put this 316 on that string. So there's the 200, 300, 310, and all the paper clips. Let's stay put. All right, and let's see what that ring is doing. And as you can see, that ring is in equilibrium. Okay? All right. So, cool. The resultant of our original two forces was 3.1 newtons at 342. 342 on the table is pointing in this direction, the direction of that pencil, the direction of that pencil, and so the equilibrium vector, the one that puts the system in equilibrium, is exactly opposite. Okay. Okay. Equilibrium. Yay. Questions, comments? Now what did I do? I... I hit a button on my on my computer that temporarily kicked me out of the meet, but it came right back, fortunately. All right, so that's it. Okay, that's the topic of the day is equilibrium. All right. So, questions, comments? It's kind of fun. It's fun to play with that force table. I really, it's uh, one of the funner labs of the year, actually. Mr. T, you're muted. I am? I thought I unmuted myself and everything. Sorry. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's fun to play with the more uh, with the force table. It's a shame that you guys aren't here because it, it's really a good lesson in equilibrium. All right. Now, so we've spent the first part of this unit taking two vectors and adding them together to to into one vector. Okay. Tomorrow, um, I made a little video that I want you guys to watch. It's like 15 minutes long, in which I do the opposite. I take a vector, one vector, and I break it up into two what we call components, okay? And it's it's fairly, once you get the hang of it, it's fairly straightforward. It's just a whole bunch of Sokotoa stuff. And it's, um, it's break, it's, the fancy thing is called, it's called resolving vectors into components, okay? We're, we're going to take one vector and we're going to break it up. And uh, we're going to see some applications of that. So tomorrow you're going to be taking, there's a daily two uh, to submit for attendance points. And then I want you to, I'm going to go through two examples. I want you to copy those down, please. Copy those examples down and, um, and bring them to class on Friday. And on Friday, you guys are going to be in breakout rooms um, doing some practice problems following the examples that I went over in class. All right? So there's uh, an example of a box being dragged. Along. I think I called it a sled. You know, if you go, um, if you're where I'm from, uh, this time of year, you can go sledding. So you take the sled to the hill, maybe a toboggan. You take, you 
take it out of the car and you throw it onto the ground and you drag it to the hill with a rope and the rope is at an angle to the ground. So when you're pulling on the when you're pulling on the sled, you're actually pulling it horizontally and you're pulling it vertically at the same time. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take those the the we're going to figure out the horizontal part of the force and the vertical part of the force. Okay, um, that's a, a box or a sled or something being dragged by means of a rope um, at an angle to the horizontal. Okay, and then the second example I'm going to do is where we have a plane that's not flying in one of the cardinal directions, north, south, east, or west, but is flying in some other um, direction. And then we're going to break it into its cardinal components, the north component, the east component, the south component, or whatever. So I'm going to just do a couple of examples of that and then bring those examples um, to class on Friday. Okay? And that will, and then we'll go on from there. We're not going to finish this unit before break, obviously. After break, I have one more application of this that I want to do before I want to have an assessment of this. And then we're going to jump right into final exams. So um, it's, it's, bump, it's coming up quick. All right, it's coming up quick at the end of the semester. Strangely enough, this year is going fast for me. I don't, I, is, it, is it going fast for you guys? Or is it going super slow? I don't know. I don't know. To me, it's going really, it's going really, it's going fast enough, you know. But not, definitely not the way I want to do this uh, for the rest of my career. But anyway, um, that's it for class today. There's no homework, but the collaborative test corrections are due at the end of the day tomorrow. At the end of the day tomorrow, okay? Um, so be sure to get those in. Um, um, and then let me know that you submitted it. All of the ones that are submitted, I, I've, I've processed. But let me know. There haven't been that many, to be honest with you. I was, I was hoping for more. But, um, yeah. Okay, that's it. Yeah, one more class of the day, and then, and then you can go home. Oh, wait a second. You're our home. Never mind. So I can go home. So, okay. So enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your day tomorrow, and I'll see you next time. Okay? Bye.